that most men live lives of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. It's so and I've true. been that guy. Oh my God. You just li- you're just in this world where you just can't wait to just run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and and almost painful to them. Yeah, soul killing. Soul killing. They're stuck in traffic all day and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They, 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 They relish the time to take a shit in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that. They're watching television and they're fucked. And I think if people have a regular day job, if you could just find some one thing that you do as a passion project and just keep building on it, just keep at, keep watering it, keep adding fertilizer, keep giving it attention, keep giving it focus, and you can escape. You can escape and you can be self-serving. You could be okay. You're gonna be okay. For making furniture feels good. You make furniture. You make furniture for a living and you you feel a great satisfaction out of that and you sell that furniture. Look, man, if you can do that, you could you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it, and then it's done and you get this satisfaction and you sell it to someone and that pays your bills. That is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for, having to have these stupid fucking office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance, and you know, you're not really, you know, you, you really need to be enthusiastic about this company. This company is your future. This kind of like, you're like, fuck, kill me now. You know, there's a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else, and I hope they understand that they can. And people that are trapped in bad situations, one of the problems is you feel like this is your future. You feel like you're fucked, and you can't get out of that. There's no hope. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no rainbow. And if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting. But if you can look at, if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt, I'm working in a shitty job, I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, fe- I, I need to feed them and water them, and I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Everyone has a different personality. They have different, different interests, different, different things that they would be really satisfied pursuing. That's not encouraged. The, the, what's encouraged is go find a job. What's encouraged is go find some place that you can shove yourself into. Go find a square hole that you can stick your round peg and just fucking jam it in there and shave down the top and the bottom so you slide in with all this extra space on the sides and feel like shit for the rest of your life because you need a job, because you're in debt, because you have credit cards, because you have student loans, because that's what everybody does. And so you do it too. That's what's wrong. You have an apartment you have to pay for, you have a car you leased, you have a wife that you have to feed, you have a child you have to raise, you have to, uh, you have your mortgage, you have your this, you have your that, and that's where it all comes from. Well, the opportunity takes place usually when you're young and you don't have any responsibility. Th- that's when you have your options. Your options are severely limited the more you gather right. responsibilities. Like, if I had to, as a 51-year-old father of three, married man pays taxes has a house and a mortgage and a business and all that jazz if i had to quit everything now and struggle the way i struggled as a stand-up comedian it would never work but the only way i could be this person now is if i took that chance when i was 21 when i was dead broke and had my cars repossessed and all that stuff that's the only way you you ever get where you want to go you have to you have to take a path that's dangerous and most people want to take the safe path. And the safe path leaves you stuck in quiet desperation mm-hmm. almost every time. It's hell. But can people just make that change? I mean, yes, look, you can, I believe they but can. But you have to plan it out. The way you can change is you have to put aside enough money to give yourself a window. And then you have to have a plan. And you have right. to spend all your waking hours outside of whatever shit job you right. do planning your escape. And you have to come to the realization very clearly that you fucked up and you got yourself stuck so whatever you're doing you have to do it like your life depends on it and whether it is you're trying to be an author and you're gonna you're gonna if you're gonna 
try to be an author and you're working eight hours a day plus commuting plus family responsibilities or whatever else you have whatever time that you have you have to attack like you're trying to save the world you're trying to save your life you don't want to drown that one and a half hours a day that you have to write god damn you better be caffeinated and motivated you got to go you got to get after it and you got to have discipline that's most people don't have those things most people don't understand what it's like to to really go for something and to know that the consequences of not doing that are horrific I think here's an important thing too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That when you feel like shit and you screw something up, like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterwards. When I've had bad stand-up sets, I've always gotten better after that because those bad sets motivate you. They get, they give you a perspective like, hey, here's some clear examples of where you fucked up. Yeah, what not to do. Yeah, don't, and don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. You have to make mistakes. You've been there, you feel it, you understand what it is, and then you have that time to adjust. That's why losing in life is so important. Whether it's getting dumped, getting fired, losing a game, lo loss. Those feelings where things didn't work out your way, that's important because it lets you know this is the bad feeling that comes when hmm. it goes wrong and you improve and then it makes the good feelings of victory all the better. And I mean that, you know, in a relative sense, like even getting good at something, forget about victory, like r making a terrible book that gets rejected by every publisher and then writing a really good one and people accept it and you're like, fuck, I got better. Yes. Like that's oh, that that's feeling. That's interesting, yeah. Those feelings of failure are really critical for your motivation. Like you see an old person walking down the street, you go, oh, that person's always been an old person. No, that was a baby. That was a baby that became a 90-year-old man. There's a, there's a progression that you're not witness to. You don't see it. And that, that, that takes place in everything. It takes place in authors. It takes place in comedians and musicians. There is a starting point, and then with time and focus, and as long as you reevaluate and reassess and constantly, objectively look at what you're doing and then pursue it with passion and focus, you get better at things. Don't be scared of failure. I think failure is awesome for you. And that's one of the reasons why, like I said, I like doing things that I suck at. I just feel like people need inspiration and they need guidelines. And if, if, as long as you can just start moving, just get action, like just getting, just movement.